Hi, I'm Stephen Hare from Archery Supply. Today we're going to look at the My Bow Revolution. What's unique about this bow? We're going to look at what's unique about it. But the first thing that you've got to look at My Bow is it's made in England. So England and Australia have a unique position. We have a long loving for our English cousins. I don't know if it's because of our ancestry, we all came from England, or it's just we beat them in cricket very, very easily. Now, if you're in America, you're going to say, what's cricket? Well, it's a game, you know, which was designed in, in England, and we decided to play against the English, and we just beat them all the time, basically. It's a bit like the US... It's a bit like American college team or high school team going and playing the English basketball team and beating them 20 to 100. Um, I'm not even going to compare their men's basketball team to the English basketball team because the English never make the basketball in the world sort of thing. Anyway, we have a longing for the English. We like the cars. They, we like their whole passion for the English logo that's on their cars and it's on their bows. So just there you'll see the English logo. It's just... You know, when you see them, they have, they're all dressed in their English uniforms with their English flags written all on them, with their hankies on their head. Look, it's cute. It's really, really nice. But the My Bow um, Revolution. This bow was used by an archer here to win the Australian Open. Um, his name was Matt McDougall. Now, it's a bit unfortunate because I assume he's sponsored by My Bow, but then no one, and I'm not having a go at him, but basically, there's been I've got these bows in my shop, and no one's asked to have a shot with them. So there's been very limited interest in this bow, and that's what we're going to look at now. In U, in the UK, in England, basically all the top archers use my bow, and I think that is awesome. They make recurves, they make accessories, which are really really good. We're talking scopes. They did make sights. Um, they did make release aids. I don't know if they still do. They had stabilizers and arrows. Now they may be made in China. I'm not saying they are. I'm not saying they are. They may be made in China. I don't know. But their bow is made in England. They have a factory there and they make them. They make risers there as well. Um, and it's cool that most of the English archers do shoot it. And I know that the English um, male compound record is held with this particular bow. I assume it's this bow. This bow comes in two sizes, 40 and 37. This is the 40 inch axle axle. Right, so my bow has made bows, compound bows for a number of years. And to me, it's a bit like cars. So the English cars were a bit unique to England. They had a style about them. They then sold out to Germany and then sold out to China, I think. But the bow is very much the same. It's very unique. Where if you look at the American bows, they're very, very similar. And it's very hard to pick the difference where this bow is very unique. So let's look at what's different. Now, first off, the finish is amazing on this bow. It's, it's clearly a step ahead of the American compound bows. Um, the whole finish, the way they put this bow together. So, like, you look at the cams and the finish, the machining on these cams and the way stuff fits together, they put extra thought into it. You can see this is the draw stop here for the, um, this is going to hit the cable and it fits inside the actual module. It's, it's a very nice system. The module itself um, kind of clamps into the wheel, which is quite nice. However, when you increase the draw length, instead of having two screws there and there there and there and there the other screw disappears which is a bit of a disappointment um, now the screws on this bow will be metric instead of imperial Amer imperial is american this is english so it's metric so all the screws will be metric um, the cam system is very similar to what you find on the PSEs. it's a dual yoke system and you're going to say well that's similar to darton it's similar to Obsession. Yeah, look, it's a similar system. It's a single track here with a yoke system um, either side to balance the bow. It's, it's, it's quite nice. Um, I like the finish on the module. It looks nice. You have two lower stabilized positions there and there. Um, it comes in a whole bunch of great colors. Um, 
the the limb pivots here um, all machined which is very nice this here is feels all metal um, there's some sort of locking thing here some little arrows I'm not sure what the arrows mean but they lock in place here which is again nice and they have locking screws on the side there and there to lock these limb pockets in in place very very simple why some of the American companies don't have something like something simple like this I think the English do this stuff very very well the cable rod um, you can say well this is a pretty standard cable rod look it's simple but it's nice and long here um, and the cable rod has two little screws which screw in this is longer than you see on some of them so PSE is a lot shorter here I think the longer is a much better system carbon cable rod um, two screw holes for the arrow rest which is fantastic that's what they should have um, the bow itself weighs five pounds IBO speed of 315 and I can't remember the draw length adjustability um, 7.5 inch brace height so the difference from there to there so it's quite long um, a little this is where the limb bolt goes in you can see the thread on the other side which is nice so you don't pop it when you wind it out too far the limbs look nice the paintwork is top class um, look I'm gonna guess these are Gordon glass limbs these little things here are to stop you from dry when you dry fire the bow to stop it blowing apart um, the machine is very high quality it's a very very highly finished bow um, I think if you owned a my bow you can say you could probably say it's the nicest finished compound bow made you could argue that point but I don't know who you're going to lose the conversation with or win the conversation with I just think this bow is very highly finished um, the balance on the bow is back so this is very much balanced like a PSC Citation, a PSC Supra. It's built for target archery, so you're going to put lots of weight on the front here. Um, it feels quite heavy. The grip feels very much like a PSC grip. It's about the same width of a PSC. Um, the, the rounding's very much like a PSC, so if you don't shoot a PSC, it's wider than a Hoyt. Um, Hoyt have a round grip for hunting, square grip for, for target. Um, this is wider than the Hoyt grip. Um, it's parallel, straight up and down. The Elite grip tapers in a bit. So it's similar, a little bit wider than the Elite grip at the throat. Um, completely different to a Matthews grip, so we won't even compare that. It just feels to me like a PSE grip um, to hold on to. Overall, it feels nice. So let's shoot this through a chronograph and see what speeds we get. Okay, so I've set the bow at 29 and a half inches. It should be on 60 pound. Um, we're going to shoot a gold tip velocity. It weighs 327 grains. It's a 400 spined arrow with an 80 grain point. So I haven't drawn this bow back. Let's just try the draw cycle. So at the start of it feels pretty similar to draw when I say similar it feels feels the same sort of poundage it's not sloppy to start with it's quite solid this bow is going to be a bit slower than some of your other um, American bows because it's got a slightly bigger brace height this bigger brace height should get this arrow off the string quicker because it's obviously off a half an inch quick half an inch shorter um, which means you should have a bit more stability as far as when you aim the bow um, should give you a bit more accuracy and I think the American the UK record for uh, the rank world ranking event is a 710 which is a very good score so I'm gonna say the English archers are probably probably is that fair probably at a higher standard than the English cricketers but that's not taking anything away from the English cricketers um, maybe the Australians are just really really good um, so there's now just there it feels like it's building it's like it feels quite heavy oh. 
Now, I thought this bow was on 29 inches and it's clearly not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten this down. I don't need a bow press to do it. So we're gonna shorten this draw length down and we're gonna restart this video. Um, I didn't think anyone had shot this bow, but clearly someone had. Um, or maybe it came set at the, <laughs> the factory long. So we're gonna just loosen this screw. We're gonna move this draw stop back. Um, so this stop at the end here. So this stop here hits the string earlier. So we're gonna move the module this way. And then we're gonna try that draw process again. So the first thing you'll notice on most bows, you have like settings like A, B, C, D to change the draw length. Um, some bows have 29, 29 and a half, 30 inches actually marked. On the MoBo cam, you've got some markings here on draw length, but I'm not sure you can see the numbers, I'm not sure what how, how to read this. I didn't see it in the instruction manual. Um, and I'm not sure whether you read it there or there. So to me, it wasn't as simple as far as what draw length it's set to. So I've moved it. And when you move this module, you've got various options to put this screw in. So I'm guessing you've got the adjustability of like quarter inches and stuff like that. Um, where with most of the American bows, it's like half inches, so either 29 or 29 and a half. Um, so let's see how this goes. So I think I've got it on 29, I think. So let's see how the draw cycle is now. So it starts off there, it's building here, building, now it's starting to get easier, getting easier. And now it lumps in the lump. So the valley starts on, I'm going to let this down. So it sort of starts to drop. And you're thinking, okay, this is going to come nicely into the valley. And then suddenly it's a quick drop off. So smooth, sudden drop off, and then a rock solid wall. Now you can adjust that wall here. So how much you're feeling. I'm feeling like this is about 80% let off. This is just set out of the factory. So let's draw that back. Feels very light back here. So that was 292 with a 327 grain arrow. Look, that's not too bad. Um, the bow kind of jumped up like that because it's got no balance. The bow would definitely be better with the stabilizer on it. We're going to shoot a VAP arrow now. This is um, a 350 with a 140 grain point on it. Weighs Weighs 390 grains. Two sixty nine. So when I shoot the bow, the the grip feels very similar to um, a PSE when I'm shooting. I feel a little bit of this coming out, the bow feels slower. I'm going to say the draw is a little bit harsher than an Elite, a PSC. Uh, more so similar to a Bowtech in the draw, so it's a little bit more aggressive. I'm trying to think of the other bow that I just drew with cams like this. More like the Matthews. Um, it's not a bad draw, it's like pretty smooth all the way through, but it's not as smooth as the other companies. The shot, the PSE jumps forward a little bit um, when you shoot it, so the PSE's got more feel about it. Do you know what this feels like? It feels like my bow to shoot. Um, so the Matthews, when you shoot a Matthews, it's quite dead in the hand. The PC's got a bit of, I'm talking the target bows. The, um, the PC's got a little bit of jump forward. The Elite's probably a little bit, but not quite as much as the um, PC. This, it feels slower. And it doesn't feel as precise as those other bows. 
Um, I don't know why. It kind of doesn't. It's like the strings aren't under as much tension. If that's fair. Um, it's different. It's different. Not bad. Different. It's just kind of reminds me of. Reminds me a bit of the like. Reminds me a bit of the older PSEs that I used to shoot. Kind of, so it reminds me of bows from probably two, three years ago. Um, like I, I think it'll be okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shoot at 18 meters. So we're going to get sight scenes, shoot at 18 meters, and see what sort of groups we get. Okay, so I'm back at 18 meters, and I've hit the goal. So I'm shooting pretty good with it, and with the revolution, I'm hitting the middle. Sights are fractionally low, but it's not a micro adjustable sight, so we're going to leave it there. But they are in the tents. I'm finding the bow easy to easy to um, aim. I'm finding the draw cycle better now, so I'm not really feeling that lump that I felt at the start of the this video. So it's becoming more familiar to, to me, the draw cycle. I'm going to say the let off feels too great. I would like less, so it'd just be a simple thing of moving this these little stops forward a bit. So nice simple process. Now when I shoot this bow, I cannot help thinking of driving the, the new Mini car. You're going to say, what has this review got to do with a Mini? Well, it's the Mini is, the design of the Mini is unique. It's unlike other little cars on the road. It's price pointed at a premium compared to other little cars like the Suzuki um, and it's like it's it's kind of cool it's a kind of a cool car and I'm gonna say my first car was a Mini um, it was a Mini Moak convertible and while my friends had cool Australian V8 cars I had this Mini Moak which was not a success with the girls um, quite expensive today to get a Mini Moak um, but back then Mini Moak was not a good look um, when my other cut friends had, you know, Monaros and Tiranas, and it wasn't a it wasn't a cool car to have back then for a guy. Now this bow comes in 70 pounds and 80 pounds, so if you're um, Bhutanese and you shoot, shoot at bits of wood at long distance with aluminium arrows or carbon arrows with fingers, um, they like shooting 70 pounds. Um, and whoever hits the bit of the wood takes the money home, the cash prize. Um, this bow is going to be completely suitable for you. If you are Bhutanese and you're shooting with fingers, make sure you set this bow at the low let at the low let off. So you don't want 80% let off. You want as much weight off those fingers as possible, so the string comes off cleanly. Anyway, back to the mini story. Um, but there was something cool about the mini, the way it drove, the way it cornered. It was, it was a pretty cool little car, and I think. The My Bow Revolution to me is a pretty cool bow. I mean, there are so many good bows on the market today, especially in the target realm. This bow will be struggling to make a presence in the American market because in the American market, the um, they pay top shooters to shoot and they pay them when they win. Uh, where my bow wouldn't be putting up prize money for 
for p p specific shoots in America. I would imagine they don't have a distributor in America and I don't imagine they sell to many shops in America. However, I would think for Europe, my bow would probably sell quite well. And I would think if I was an American dealer, it would be a cool line to put in my shop. Now I know most Americans will buy American bows, right? I know that, but it's something different. It's something different. It's not what, if there's 250 archery stores in your state, you're going to have a different line and probably Hoggett's not going to hate you. PSE is not going to hate you for having my bow in your store. And you want cool stuff for people to talk about and cool stuff for people to see. Now, back in the day, my dad was the Australian distributor for my bow. If I get it correct, the original owner of, of my bow, the company is now run by the son. I'm pretty sure this is correct. So, the son knows my dad. So, they kind of know the family, so there's a connection. And we were looking at importing my bow from England. It's just to make it affordable, you need to bring in containers of them. I didn't have space in my shop at the time to bring in a container full of archery gear because my shop was at a, you know, space was at a premium. But the, the owner of the store, very good to speak to, very nice guy to talk to, easy to communicate with. where some, some businesses, some bow, bow companies won't even talk to you. It doesn't matter what number you throw at them. You can throw at them $200,000 order, they won't talk to you. And it's like, it's weird. Um, it doesn't even matter how big you are. It's just, that kind of, I'm gonna say the difference is, the person who owns my bow owns my bow so he's the owner so when he makes money from a bow sale he makes money from a bow sale it doesn't make any sense right but if you're a company and you employ staff when staff sell a bow they don't make money they just ma they make a salary so them selling like extra bows it doesn't really worry them so a lot of them will just stay for um, they'll just sit the course they won't they won't be that worried about growing the business look i'm i'm finding the the draw cycle nice how's it it's good to aim. Finding the shot good. Like I understand why these people shoot big scores with this bow. Now I'm gonna say I had a customer come into my store. He's from the country and he said I want to buy this bow. Not sure why he wanted to buy this, babe, but he wanted to buy this. I think he liked the machining and everything about it, and he liked the fact it was English. Okay? He wasn't English, he was clearly Australian. I don't think he had any English heritage, we might, but he was clearly an Aussie bloke, right? No disrespect or anything about being an Aussie bloke, but anyway, he had a big long drawing, 31 inches. And um, so we set up this boat, this particular boat, at 31 inches. And I set up all the other bows in the store for him at 31 inches. This bow at 31 inches is a beast. And when I say a beast, it spits an arrow. And it's, it's like 
a shotgun going off. It's very different at this draw length. It's so different, it surprised me it's the same bow because it feels completely different at 31 inches as it does at 29. It's, it's tame at 29. At 31 inches, this bow, the arrows are literally going straight through the target butt. It's, it's crazy. There was a lot of vibration at 31 inches. 29 inches, it's, it's calm, it's a teddy bear. Now, I'm gonna say the customer liked the overall finish of the Mybo, and I would say he would have thought it was the best of the bows he tried. So he tried the Bowtech, he tried the Elite, and tried the PSC. Um, now, he liked the bows. Um, we tried the um, new Elite Envision. Now, he wanted a target bow, so we also tried the result. Now, we gave him the PSC Citation 40 inches to, to try and in his first shot, he goes, this is the boat for me. He liked the way it drew. He liked the way it shot. He liked the way it felt. Um, the grip, he liked everything. One shot, he goes, that's the bow I want. And that was the last bow we actually tried in the shop. So he tried all the bows in the shop. And the Citation 40 with an SE cam was the last one he shot. He shot one arrow with it. He said, that's it. That's the boat. Because um, he was like, you're not going to talk me into it, Brand, are you? And I was like, no, I don't care what, you, I said, I don't care what your bow. Bye. Go and try them all out. You decide what you want and you decide for, for the reasons you want. Okay, so sorry the video cut out. My memory, my memory card was full. But overall, the grip is pretty good. There's one low one down there, but the rest are excellent. Um, so my summary of the My Bow Revolution. I really like the finish of the bow. Um, just, adjustability is good on draw length and let off. I really like that. Um, I like that you can complete flexibility on the draw length adjustment and the let off. I really like that. Um, I think it's a good company. However, so my negative point is, I think at this price point that the Revolution is at, my by Revolution, uh, it's competing against a lot of elite bows on the market. It's competing against your PSC citations, your, um, I'm going to say your Hoyt Invicta, but I'm going to say the Hoyt Invicta is at a higher price point, and the Hoyt Altus, which is probably the same same price, but I'm thinking probably going to pick the Mybo Revolution. Um, the, it's going to compete against the Elite Result. The Elite Result is cheaper. The Elite Result is a pretty, it's got the same sort of functionality where you can adjust the draw length and the let off. Very similar to type of design. However, the Mybo um, has a yoke system for a cable, like the PSE. Um, the PSE you can just let off, and the draw length as well. Um, the Elite Result is cheaper. It competes against the Bowtech Revolution. Now, the Bowtech is a pretty unique bow, and it's got the adjustable grip. Um, you can flip the modules to change the feel of it. Um, it's a... It's a very good bow. Um, I'm going to say all the, all the bows at the top end are very, very good. So, I'm going to say that the English people shooting this bow and the Australian shooting this bow, it does not surprise me they shoot very good scores with this bow. I think I could shoot a very good score with this bow. And I think that is a pretty good score with this bow with a basic three-pin sight and no peep sight and no stabilizers. So I would clearly shoot better with this bow being set up and maybe a little bit shorter in the draw length. Um, I like the way the bow feels. I'm happy with the draw, draw cycle. At the start, I, was gonna, I would say that the other draw cycles are a little bit better. I'm sort of comfortable with it now and I'm thinking it's pretty similar to the other ones. You could debate that the other, that the other bows like the Elite and the PSE and the Bowtech are a bit smoother. Look. I'm pretty happy with the draw cycle. Um, I think overall, like if you were in the market for a top of the line bow and you had a $2,000 price point, which is where this bow is, so it does compete pretty much dollar for dollar against the US top of the line bows, except for the Hoyt Invicta, which is another price step above it. 
And I think if you are in the market for a Hoyt Invicta, then you probably want to try this bow as well, because I think this bow has some things that bow doesn't have. Um, I think it'd be very worthwhile to have a shot with the bow. Um, I would clearly shoot with this bow. Um, I find the grip so similar to the PSE, there's no, there's no differentiation at all for me. Um, the Bowtech grip is different, and it's, that's kind of, for me to swap to a Bowtech or an Elite, it's quite a change for me, where this bow feels very much like a PSE. Um, in the whole way it draws, the way it shoots, it feels very, very similar. Um, the finish is excellent. I think both, I think my bow have produced a nice product at the price point, which is just about where it needs to be in the marketplace. So I, I think um, my bow revolution is going to hit marketplaces in England and Europe very well. I think in the Australian marketplace, it's going to probably struggle. And I'm going to say why it's going to struggle. I think it's going to struggle in Australia. Um, it doesn't need to struggle. Like I said, one of the top shooters is shooting it. But that shooter is not very high, is not very visible in social media. Um, so... I'm going to say the biggest selling target bow in Australia would be the PSE Supra which is a lower price point and that's a nice bow to shoot and it's very similar to the MyBow Revolution except the MyBow Revolution has a limb locking system um, besides that the Supra is going to be a little bit cheaper I'm going to say the Supra um, is backed by PSE and not that MyBow has got a problem with warranty it's just PSE is such a big company there's so many of them where the MyBo, there's probably two in Australia. Um, I've got three in my shop, right? But there's probably two being shot in Australia. Um, so I think you, I think MyBo struggles from that perspective. There's not a lot of them out there being shot, so people are not shooting them and getting a feel for them and going, look, I really like this compared to the thing, I want something different. Um, I am surprised Australia's got a high English population. I mean, the suburb in which I live, half the population would have to be English. For some reason, all the English people who come to settle in Adelaide come to this suburb um, to, to settle. And a lot of my clients a lot of my archers are English so you know they've been here for you know a few months they come to Australia for the weather for, for employment um, to get out of the cold um, they you know there's a beach here accommodations cheap um, the salaries are good so they move to Australia I would think that more more people who are English would want to try the Mybo revolution or, the, or one of the MyBow bows. Um, I'm surprised that there's not more demand for it because English people I would have thought are quite patriotic given their love for sport and their love for dressing up in the English flag. Um, but I clearly have not seen that. Um, so with that, um, With that, I really like the Revolution, and I think it should have a greater market share in the marketplace. And I would guess in England, it has a big marketplace, because I'm thinking the shops there, there'll be plenty of them, and very few of all the American brand bows there for people to, tr to try. So my feeling is there's probably a lot more my bows in England, just because they're all there and people can come and touch and feel them. They're there, they're made, the spare parts are there and made. Um, so it's a lot more accessible. So, but overall I think it's a pretty good product and very, very interesting bow. Um, and I think it's a step up of, it's a, this bow is a complete step up of the my bows in the past that we've seen. Not that they've been bad bows, they haven't. 
It's just this bow is the finishes, the thoughts that put into it is is quite good. I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Thanks for watching. Bye.